First of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about side effects and how you should uh, approach it with your doctor. We're going to talk about this important division between inducers and non-inducers in terms of anti-epileptic drugs. Uh, we're going to talk about section function, bone health, which we heard a little bit about this morning. Vascular risk factors, which is a very new topic in uh, side effects of, for men and other side effects that may be important to you. So. Uh, as a doctor uh, and an epileptologist, I, I know, especially with men, and this is actually published, we're, we're very thick-headed, we don't like to go to doctors, we also sometimes don't like to speak up and tell the doctor about our side effects. Sometimes uh, it's interesting because I listen to the men and then look to their wife or their uh, significant other, and a whole other spiel of things comes out that I wouldn't have heard if, if he's just sitting there. And if they come alone, a lot of times I have to really pry and ask. But it is important to talk about these side effects and uh, what, uh, what's going on in life, how are the medications impacting your uh, quality of life. And the truth is that all doctors and, and, and as we heard uh, uh, family members speak today, this is not easy. This is a, a relationship that develops with time. There's a lot of uh, situations in which uh, maybe the seizures themselves are so difficult to treat that maybe some side effects may be tolerated for a period of time. But uh, if this relationship is good, if you're willing to talk, then we can work together and try to figure out what is that, uh, maybe how, how we're going to switch the medication, how quickly. There's other strategies that we can do, maybe change the dosing, uh, the time of day. There's simple things that can be done, but if we don't hear about this uh, side effects and how you're feeling, we will never know to, to change them. Um, so it is important to speak up, and it, it is important uh, to uh, mention to the doctor. For me, I, I, I get down to business, ask about the seizures, but I always make sure that there's a time at the end or even halfway through the, through the interview where I ask, so what else, anything else going on? And that's the time that I expect the patients to bring up any other issues, any, any concerns that there are. Um, and I try to make it right before I make a plan so that if maybe some things have to be changed, we talk about it. But, um, we do want to be in that beautiful, perfect place where the seizure medication is working. There's no, no side effects and no seizure. That's our, that's our goal. And that's, uh, I, I feel that that's the goal that we as patients and doctors as, have a relationship to try to achieve. But that goal needs patience, needs time, and needs, uh, needs a lot of communication. So um, it's important to hear uh, what you have to say. In, ep in the epilepsy world, there has been a transition that happens maybe in the early 90s, uh, where uh, what we call the inducers and the non-inducers, or the old and the new is what you heard. Some of the speakers probably mentioned it this morning, you maybe heard it or not, they said that's the old medication, that's the new medication. And what it means, it truly is the way those medications came out in the market and they were produced. And we know about phenytoin or dilantin, tegretol, carbamazepine or phenobarbital and uh, trileptor, carbamazepine being one of the newer guys in that group and valproic acid or Depakote being also uh, an older medication. And what they all have in common is a very specific thing which is they induce the liver. They make the liver work quicker at, at taking or eating up that medication. And uh, in a simple way, these medications induce a protein or a, an enzyme in the liver that uh, 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 to actually be made more uh, in more or higher quantities and to work better. And that production takes time because it's an induction that occurs through the DNA. So it takes a little bit of time. So you at the beginning may take a medication and it may not induce the liver or cause the liver to eat up other medications quickly, but maybe four or five days later, it, it will start doing that. And that is important for many things that we're going to talk about, but very important also to know that it will do that to other medications you're taking. You're taking statins for cholesterol, you're taking medication for uh, blood thinners uh, because you had a clot or other issues. So it is important that your doctors know that you're taking these medications because it, it doesn't completely uh, discriminate on all medications. Some of them may not be affected by this, but in general they will. Um, and that's an important distinction to the new medications, Capra, Levitoracetam, Lamotrigine, Lamictal, Topiramate, Topamax, Neurontin or Gabapentin or Pregalolin, Miscosin, Lyrica, and Lacosamide, Vimpat. Uh, these medications and a, a bunch of slew of new medications that are coming down uh, in the market uh, that don't induce the liver, meaning they don't affect the, the way that the liver 
uh, 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 metabolizers as takers of drugs. Topiramate, by the way, in high doses can do it. So we can put a little clause there. But I want you to pay this attention to this list because I'm going to mention it a little bit more as we go and talk about the side effects. Um, I don't mean to sound like the old guys are the bad guys. They're certainly great medications. I use them when I need to use them. They work. They just uh, have specific side effects just as the other side effect, the other medications may have their own side effects. And um, the side effect profile uh, can be helpful in some cases even for the older medication but we just need to be aware of them. So it doesn't mean that, uh, because a lot of times you hear through this talk, maybe the old may be not as good or, or have certain side effects. It doesn't mean that they're not good medications, they just have a specific side effect profile. So let's talk about sexual function. That's uh, one of the major topics in mental health that uh, these medications can occur, can uh, affect or influence. Uh, the, imper the most important three things that these medications uh, can affect is, is the libido, the, the, the sexual desire. Um, there's been many studies that looked at different types of ways that this can be affected. Infertility, the actual ability for the sperm to be made, the testicular uh, size is smaller. Actually, the sperm themselves, when you look in the microscope, may not be moving well or actually look normal. And impotence, the ability to achieve an erection. Uh, obviously, all these factors uh, be, may be affected by the seizures themselves, the epilepsy. There are studies that show that temporal lobe epilepsy may affect this. And also, mood, uh, if you're depressed, if you're not, uh, or you're having anxiety, this, all these things can be affected. And that can be also part of the epilepsy itself or, or the seizures themselves. However, uh, medications have a big impact on this. So, let me show you, I don't like to show a lot of studies. Uh, but this is a, kind of one of the first studies that was done at Harvard uh, showing that actually the, there's a distinction between the old medications and the new medications. And if you look at the black bar, that's the control, that's the highest bar, and that's the control, so that's normal patients without epilepsy and the levels of available testosterone in, in their system based on age. So there's three groups, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, and 41 to 50. The next part over is patients that have epilepsy but luckily are not taking uh, medications. And you see that the bar goes down but it's still higher than the other three bars that are coming up after that. The, the next one is Tegretor carbamazepine and the one after is phenytoin. And if you see those two bars in the three groups are the smallest or have the lowest available testosterone. And lastly, the last one that has a checkered pattern appearance, that's lamictal or lamotrigine. And even though that bar is still a little lower than the controls and the patients that have epilepsy but are not in any drugs, it's still higher and significantly higher than the other two. And this, this is important because there had been that theory uh, established that uh, medications that induce the liver may actually um, induce uh, the level of testosterone to be lower. They may actually also affect these binding uh, enzymes that bind testosterone in the system and keep it from being lower, and also other androgenic or other hormones that may affect uh, sexual function. And so it was a very important study. It was actually only 87 patients, but since then, a bunch of studies have come out that have shown similar results and have proven that uh, maybe these old medications or uh, inducers may affect uh, available testosterone. Um, specifically, um, the, the, the thing that made this study very clear is that they only, the, the basic science studies that had been done before looked at the available testosterone, but they never did a sexual questionnaire. In the sexual questionnaires, there's a bunch of them and different uh, questions that they asked, but they never actually related the quality of life and, and sexual function of these patients. And for the first time, they actually looked at the levels of testosterone, they looked at the levels of, of these other androgenic hormones, and they related, and they didn't realize that not only were they lower, but that the sexual function and, and that the sexual desire uh, uh, were actually lower on these patients, and actually much better on the patients that took lamotrigin, and it correlated with the high levels of testosterone. So, um, in the uh, now in 2009, or, or, or uh, now that we've continued to, to look at this uh, in other, in other um, larger trials with different um, uh, hormones, they actually lo looked and they realized that the most important thing was not only testosterone, but this binding globulin that keeps the testosterone in the system active. 
and that actually that globulin would be a lot higher in this in this other medications. And the point I want to make here is that uh, when we thought that the relationship within the liver function and and eating off the medication of testosterone and lowering the testosterone was simple, it was like okay, well the liver eats up testosterone, you have low testosterone. If we if uh, we change the medication, the testosterone is going to be higher, sexual function is going to be higher. It turns out that there is another another enzyme that can be influenced with that, and that actually just giving testosterone is not that simple. So the relationship is not quite clear. But what we have noticed is that using different medications over the newer ages, specifically lamotrigine, has been one of the ones that has shown to do best in this, will help. And that's something that you should know. And, and if this is something that uh, you're concerned about, uh, you should consider asking your uh, epileptologist about. Now, what's going on with the new medications? Well, the new medications, some of them have very small uh, one or two patient reports that have shown that uh, there could be some sexual dysfunction uh, and mainly satisfaction and libido, not so much um, the testicular dysfunction or, or, the, or the infertility problems with the, with the actual sperm. So uh, that is levetiracetam, toparamid, and, and neurontin. Levetiracetam, we have known for some time now that it could cause mood issues and depression. It can exacerbate and make patients uh, very crankly, which I'll talk about at the end. So it may be part of that what's going on. Toparamid, as I mentioned, can induce the liver in higher doses, so that could be part of what's going on. And neurontin, we're not quite sure what's going on. Interestingly enough, uh, oscorbazepine, which I put in the inducers uh, group on the old medication group, can actually have some improvement in, in libido in some cases. Now, um, this medication has also been known to improve mood, so we believe maybe the mood part of this medication is what's causing that improvement. Uh, in general, it's going to be hard until we uh, have much more data on these new medications, which ones are the ones that are going to have different uh, effects um, on mood. But most importantly, uh, just so you know, and this is something that I've been reading about, and this is a topic that I, that's interesting me for some time, but men's health has been something that has kind of been put to the wayside in the epilepsy world. There's not a lot of studies. The newer medications uh, haven't been really looked at, and when you look at the case reports on the newer medications, they have one or two patients at most, and we're in 2015. So this is a topic that for some reason that I'm not quite sure hasn't been really um, studied or picked up by anybody in the in the epilepsy world. That's so I believe with time somebody's gonna pick it up, maybe me, uh, and start doing more studies uh, on on this uh, side effects of the newer medication and trying to understand the complex different mechanisms that the medications and all and the epilepsy itself could uh, uh, could have in in sexual dysfunction in men. And also the most most interesting in the, in the infertility part, which. Uh, can be very devastating for, for some patients. Um, when I mention that specifically for the morphology and the, the, the amount of sperm, so the fertility part, valproic acid has been the biggest culprit, Depakote, in that sense. So that's something to keep in mind. Any questions about sexual dysfunction so far? So we're going to talk about bone health. That's a, a topic that was well discussed uh, by Dr. Schmidt this morning. Um, what's interesting with, with bone health is, is the relationship with vitamin D and calcium. So it turns out that vitamin D is very much metabolized or taken care of by the liver. And the same enzyme, the same process that occurs with the medication can, can be affect, can affect vitamin D. So as, when you take this medication, this old medication that induces the, the liver to eat or work faster at, at taking care of this medication, the vitamin D levels can go down. Without vitamin D, you can't absorb calcium, and therefore the calcium that's available in your system is very low, and the only place that the body can find it is your bones. So it starts taking out this, uh, the calcium from your bones, and that affects your bone marrow density, and hence you get fractures. And this has been well documented that fractures in a patient with epilepsy are much, much higher. So uh, we do know that even though men have thicker bones than women, it, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't be aware of this potential side effect, uh, and that vitamin D is essential. So uh, you should uh, know that the sun activates vitamin D. It can be increased by supplements, and uh, it increases that, uh, in, uh, the calcium to be digested. So you should uh, take higher doses of vitamin D by being outside, exercising, and also try to take higher doses of calcium. So 
Uh, there is a relationship between the, the drugs and the time that you're being on these medications and, and uh, the bone loss. Uh, again, if you've been on a medication that they induce for more than five years, you should consider getting a test called the DEXA scan, which is the test that checks the bone density. And uh, this basically controls to normal population the scan and the, the, the thickness of the bones and can let you know if you're going to have to take medications for it or just vitamin D and calcium. In general, you take at least 400 international units of vitamin D along with calcium and exercise and get out in the weather. Do the, the epilepsy stroll, that's a great pitch, uh, and eat a balanced diet. So the vascular risk factors, this is some a topic that has been recently studied. These inducer medi uh, medications, the old medications, have been shown to increase uh, with uh, cholesterol, uh, LDL, and triglycerides. Uh, also lipoprotein little a, homocysteine, and C-reactive protein. All these are risk factors for stroke and heart attack. Um, the way that this could be do, uh, it could happen by inducing the way that this 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 uh, form, uh, this uh, fatty uh, molecules, which is cholesterol, are being uh, taken care of in the in the body. So, if your cholesterol is not well uh, metabolized because of other enzymes and metabolizers that are being eaten up by the liver, it, it's going to be higher. Um, this is a very controversial topic, but it's important to know because if your cholesterol is high and it's not going down in your medications, uh, the, like the statins that are used to uh, treat this medication, uh, this condition is it, not working, you should consider maybe switching from the older medication to the newer medication. Understanding that there's a risk, and if you're controlled with your seizures, this should be a conversation that you have with your epileptologist, because it could be tricky uh, doing that change, but it should be considered. Um, Lastly, I want to talk about hair loss. It's important to me, it's important to men. Uh, Valproic acid has been known to cause hair loss as well as neurontin. Um, old dilantin has also seen it. It is important to know that that's a, a cosmetic side effect, but there's been a lot of quality of life uh, surveys that show that this is very important in men and that that's something that you should consider if it's occurring. Um, the same with weight, valproic acid and gabapentin as well as Lyrica or Priabalin can do this can increase weight and that's something that affects overall health so you should consider changing medication. And mood, the biggest culprit is gonna be Keppral levetiracetam. I've seen people get divorced, couples break up because of the irritability that it can cause in men. So that's something that you should consider. I think we're out of time. No Thank worries. you, Dr. Okay. Thank you very much.